today? Uh, you know, when I was single, I used to fast weekly, like once, once a week I would fast. And I don't remember when I started pursuing the idea of Lent, uh, practicing Lent, but my sister did convert to Russian Orthodoxy. So I'm guessing that it was somewhere in that time that I started to hear more about those traditions and was really intrigued by the, the idea of 40 days um, making space for God uh, in my life um, on a daily basis in a new way, like in a really special way. And by, by cutting out sugar, once it was cutting out sugar, um, and just every time I was really craving sugar, it was a reminder, this is the time to pray. This is the time to seek God. So I, I really, after those 40 days, I really f did feel closer to God. I just felt like we had spent much more time together. And so I, I think what's really important to remember is um, character is not built quickly. And the thing with something that's 40 days long, it, I think it, it asks, it demands perseverance, it demands you learn patience, um, self-control, and, and also really a desire to know God better. So, I mean, if we go into it just saying, okay, I'm gonna go without something for 40 days, I mean, we missed the point, right? But the point is, I want to know God better. I, I want to make space for Him. So. I guess as a family asking, how can we make space for God? Like, I think it's gonna be different for each of us. Um, but I know it's really hard to practice something like this alone. So I'm really excited like that maybe um, as a church we could do it, uh, just to have that community aspect. And certainly a family is like a little community. Um, and that would really be special. I think originally, Participating in Lent was kind of a cool thing to do. It was like what my friends at church were doing. And so it was kind of like, what are you giving up for Lent? What are you giving up for Lent? And um, I think at that time it kind of fell flat for me, to be honest. Um, and then later on, probably within the last five years, I would say, I've been more drawn to the church calendar and to the rhythms of God telling the story through the church body and through the calendar, his great story of redemption and um, of love, really. And so the idea of preparation and anticipation and then celebration really appeals to me. And I think Lent, because it's a season of preparation and anticipation, <laughs> that's not as natural for me. Like I love the celebration, I love the feast, and the fast is a bit more difficult. And so I think that that really is what it is, is this idea of story getting into me as I practice um, giving up or leaning in to God. His story and his love really is working its way into me and into my family. I also think that the draw to Lent is honoring my church heritage roots because while I became a Christian as a teenager through youth ministry, my family of origin, my mom actually went to the Anglican church. And so I think it's a really cool way that God has kind of brought my family history full circle in the observance of kind of this Lent and this Christian calendar idea. Something that I loved about the service last Sunday is when Ryan said that Lent exposes where our hope is and where our peace comes from. And so this idea of a rhythm that can shape our life and can shape our loves really just draws me in. So as I prepare for Lent, I'm thinking about, and I'm talking to God about, what, where are my loves? Where are my loves disordered? How would you love to reorder my priorities? How would you like to kind of hone my character? Or um, how would you like our friendship to deepen and grow? What area would you like me to press into a little bit? Whether it's adding something like a prayer practice or sitting in silence for 15 minutes a day or going for a walk and just talking with Jesus, all those can be Lent practices. I think that the thing that I would say by way of inspiration is actually a Richard Foster quote. And he talks about fasting and he talks about how fasting is feasting. 
And so in this time of Lent, as we're fasting from something, that we would remember that as we fast, we feast. We feast on God and on our friendship with him, and we feast on his presence, and we feast on just even the opportunity to suffer um, in a small way. Like our suffering is so small compared to what he has suffered for us. And yet we're asked and invited to um, participate in the sufferings of Jesus, in really reflecting on um, suffering and on crucifixion, and that he is always with us as we suffer. And so to be given the gift to actually sit with him in his suffering, I think is a beautiful offering. And I think that it just makes him, I think it brings him joy. I think it makes him smile. That suffering piece, actually. I love the theme. I, 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 I sometimes stumble on it though. It's like, why does he want us to suffer? But then I just think, you know, he promised that we would suffer. I think that we all suffer. I, I think it's like human experience to suffer. We don't want to admit that in North America. No. Like we want to flee it. We flee We, we try our hardest. We're yeah. so afraid of suffering. Like, yeah. we're so afraid of it. Like, why are we so afraid of suffering? Um, but it seems like our, our pursuit of comfort has just brought us barrenness. So it's just an interesting, I, I don't have any answers I, to that. I think like the whole thing is we want to have our identity <laughs> in Jesus, but part of having identity in Jesus is Jesus suffered. Yeah. He suffered for us and it actually brings us into closer relationship to actually understand that and appreciate what he did. And we do it in such a small way, yeah. <laughs> such a small way, little things here and there and, and, uh, and yet Jesus gave his life. Well, South 